Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry and it's time for some more King Arthur Knight's Tale. Now, in the time since I've played the last episode, while I was waiting for a decent opportunity to record, I kind of got a real hankering for this game. I missed it, and so I played through one of these missions. I'll do it again, I should probably do it first. I played through the Curse of Enid, and I did so with the four heroes you currently see. That would be Sir Bedivere, Lady Guinevere, Sir Ector, and Sir Mordred. Now, this save is from the end of the last episode, just before I purchased all those potions, and possibly before I did a few other things, because um, I had an inkling yeah, a tiny little feeling I might want to buy one less potion. I can't remember exactly what I did differently. But let's see. Is everyone fully equipped? They are. So no real difference, just a slightly different um, amount of potions purchased. So I won't be going to this mission completely blind, and afterwards there was an event which pretty much forced me to play the Cauldron Mission next. Now, the Cauldron Mission is against the Picts, so I would want to use Sir Tristan, who is currently healing up. The Curse of Enid and the Horn of the Dauntless are both against the Lost, against whom Sir Tristan would be fairly useless, to be honest, with all of his poison attacks. And all of those skeletons and zombies he'd be hitting with poisoned weapons, and just, yeah, just no damage at all, really. Now, his injury, double damage from bleeding, means nothing to him, as he ignores poison and bleeding. Completely immune, no effect. This injury, I can basically ignore this and not have to heal it, until he gets another injury, and then I can put him in for healing. And I'd also like to get him a bit of an armor upgrade. Uh, plus one injury token is very good. The Heroic Sigil of Fury is tempting. Is it? No, no, no. It was... Huh. The six armor of res retorting Sigil of Infusion was tempting. That's right. Especially for damage reflection. Now, if I'm going to take him into a level 10 mission, I'd like him to at least be level 9. And if I take him out of the hospice, and don't worry, you know, I can put him back in again, not a problem. If I were to pop him in here, he'd still be two missions training. He would be guaranteed to hit next level after, though. Is there anyone here? Um, could pop her out. However, he is very badly wounded, and if he does start taking vitality damage, he's not going to last very long. So I think, while he does gain additional damage from the Mark of Reprisal, Getting him some vitality to start with is probably a good idea. I do want to be starting to get him some more skill points though, as I think he's going to be around for a while, as Lady Isolde is a good member of the court. Um, so I will heal him. I strongly suspect that that experience will top up to a level after any single mission he does. And he doesn't need the full two missions healing, one will probably be good enough. We'll also probably finally be able to field Sir Balan again after this next one. However, if that random event is guaranteed after the Curse of Enid, or after one more mission, then being forced to do the Cauldron mission, I might almost be better off doing the Cauldron mission first. Who do I want for the Cauldron mission? I want. Lady Dindrain, Sir Tristan, Sir Balan, Lady Isolde, possibly Merlin, to 
depending on if I'm forced to or not. That could be a very tough mission depending on who I'm forced to take with me. You'll also notice I'm taking Lady Guinevere with me, despite her serious injuries. Um, we'll regain four vitality at the end of a mission. I'm kind of banking on that. Um, so Bedivere is really heavily anti-lost at the moment. Extra damage against Picts. I mean, do we want to swap that? Do we have anything against the Lost, which is equally good? I mean, it loses five armor piercing, and it's only two extra damage. Five percent armor penetrating. So it's only um, no armor break. Sorry. So that's five armor break for an extra two damage. It doesn't feel like a worthy trade-off just yet. Uh, if I do the Horn of the Dauntless and I get the same event as I did after the Curse of Enid, that would then force me to go and do the Cauldron. And I think I'd rather do this one first, especially as I'm aware of it is reasonably short, and we can have some fun. A former fun. knight of the Round Table, Sir Geraint, sent me an urgent message. He is trying to lift a curse in one of the Lady of the Lake's ancient glades, and he needs our help. The colossal forests of Avalon have turned into monster-ridden nightmares, so ordinarily his quest would not pique my interest. But this is the Lady's domain we are talking about. We should investigate. And maybe we can find a new knight to swell our ranks. Now, the story of Geraint and Enid seems to be less popular this century than it was in the previous one. I think it was quite popular in the 19th and early 20th century, but it was also popularized a lot in the sort of 1970s, 1980s, I think. So, um, Sir Geraint has to escort the Lady Enid from, I don't know where, from one location to another. And she treats him in an absolutely beastly manner. She is horrible to him. She mocks him, she insults him, she harangues him. She is really nasty and horrible. And he puts up with it. He endures her wickedness and cruelty. And over time, her heart begins to soften to him. And... I believe at one point she gets, you know, towards the end of the journey, she gets into some kind of nasty hardship and he rescues her and she appreciates it. And they actually end up getting married. I knew a woman a bit like Lady Enid once. I put up with her abuse and her heart didn't really seem to soften to me very much. Although there was definitely some fondness there to begin with, just a lot of abuse and... Ah... <sighs> It's a shame things didn't work out better, really. Oh well. Let's get into this mission then, shall we? You'll notice I'm taking Sir Ector with me. And that may be a bit of an issue because of his morale. He's not going to be particularly happy, and he'll become less so as time goes on. Knights of Camelot, the old gods have brought you here. Once again, I'm reminded of how American the voice acting in this game is. You'll notice he's wielding a bow. Hmm. How can we help? Your message mentioned a curse and an evil spirit. Aye. This used to be the Lady's Sacred Grove, with birdsong, peaceful animals and the like. It doesn't look very peaceful anymore. It certainly doesn't. That's why I called for your help. We need to destroy a malevolent spirit, and we have no time to lose. I mean, this here is very spiky, you know, and prickly looking. That almost looks like Blackthorn. I don't think it is, but it's it's those similar short, spiky looking prongs that would come off branches on Blackthorn. There is something you're not telling me. We'll help you, but you have to tell us everything. You're right. So, back in Britannia, you might have heard the legend of Enid, the wisest woman of the kingdom. I apparently have no idea who she is, despite probably having a bit of a better idea than a lot of people who would have played this game. That's your loss, then. She was blessed by the spirits. 
She saved my life many times with her advice. And she was my wife. I remember an illustration of the lady holding her nose, sitting in the saddle with the knight riding by her side, saying, oh, You smell like a pigsty! was the caption. Or I, was he a stable hand who was promoted to knight? And then, and that was, so it was more class prejudice than personal dislike? That might have been it. Huh. I'm sensing a dark turn in this tale. And rightly so. Let's get moving. It will be easier to show you what this is all about. Then show me the way. Now this mission has a very small map and can be achieved relatively shortly, so let's get on with it. See that? Beautiful apparition? It's a warning. Ready your arms! So it would seem the Lady Enid has manifested as some manner of stag. Alright, we have Revenants, which are a new monster type. And we have Sir Geraint, who only has a single potion, possibly Geraint, as it may be Welsh. Uh, so he has the Ice Shield, two, six, yeah he can do this. And it's a regular shot, so let's get him some protection. Ranged attack that deals 100% weapon damage to the target, and 50% weapon damage to the two enemies closest to them within two tiles range. So, both of these, or... Now, Revenants appear to have a self-heal ability. Let's look at that. Is it control? Okay. Unleashes inner rage to show its true form. That is completely useless as a description for an ability. Right. So we want to hold off these and these. I believe the Lord is my witness. We would need to move. Uh, one, two, three, four. Hmm. What is the movement range on this one? Not enough to actually physically attack the stack. This one absolutely can, so we need to block that. This one can so we need some Mordred up here to begin with. Let's get some heavy damage on this revenant. Alright. Time to feed the ravens. Excellent. And let's face this way. So this square can advance, attack, and take prickly spiky damage. Now. Which one should I take? Um, let's drop a few traps. Just as many as we possibly can. Maybe even, yeah, I'm gonna drop one there. And then if we can go out here, and remember she has no um, ranged attacks. At your service, my lord. There we go. I think I'm going to end my turn... No, no, no. Uh, yes. There. 
And now they have reinforcements, so I'll probably drop some more traps. And I imagine we go okay. Your command. This might be this turn or the next turn will be a good turn to use inspire. Time to feed the rivers. Now Sir Mordred is out here doing nothing in particular. He can head back this way. He can even drop a lightning bolt. And that's probably not an entirely bad idea. And if he moves to here, that way he'll block because they have to stop adjacent, don't they? Make up your mind now. I fight for honor. Sure. the round table or my forefathers now I can absolutely drop these and absolutely should your command this is adjacent so that's bad sinner shall bleed Um, we don't know what's spawning. Your orders? So if I just drop another trap. There we go, lovely. And I think that's good. Okay. Oh, the trap got him. Lovely. I'm oh. not even bleeding. Um, we might be able to get away without doing it at all. Let's freeze this one. Power and glory. Hmm, cover. Command. Actually, yes. For the round table. Now we shall inspire. I can take for more. We'll get some health back. <laughs> and work on some more health, as these can have quite a horrific damage output. Will this get health back? Might as well find out. Oh, he's on full anyway. Ah, oh, fine. Right. Sinner shall bleed. Really now? Just want to blast him, you know? Oh, you don't have enough. Gotcha. Well, how about this then? Excellent. So many offerings. <sighs> Lovely. Your command. Nobody on one yet on the respawns, so all good. For king and country. One less to worry. Are there any more? Is there another wave of reinforcements coming? Uh, the encounter is still going. We haven't felled the last foe, so yes, there are some kind of reinforcements coming. Let us throw down an overwatch here. He's on fire, so we don't need to stop him.
But now we know we do need to stop these. Your command. For Avalon. Let us absolutely do so. Fire and steel. Your command. Blessings. Your command. Uh, we still got another turn waiting for ice shield, but let's retreat with Sir Hector. So, Sir Hector doesn't generally like the way we're running the kingdom. I fight for honor. And we'll probably end up replacing him with Lady Morgana at some point, but for now he's available. Also, he has a great passive for putting him in the Tower of Enchantment. But he's just not good for missions at the moment. And oh dear, there we go. So he resurrects before the fire damage. That's very helpful to know. And we have one of these, which is a serious issue. Gotta watch that health. Cut you to size. Lovely. So your head is mine. So far, so good. The Lord is my witness. For king and country. Obviously, he's got cover, so... Oh, that's really unfortunate. Um, let's just... Stand here to reduce attacks. Your command. And snag this quick kill. You know what? Actually, this is very tempting. Also very irresponsible. Probably shouldn't have done that. Okay. Well, it is what it is. He's probably a bit too far away from the lightning now as well. What is your command? The apparition you saw. It is my Enid. Let me guess. This is an evil spirit haunting you, claiming that she is your wife? Are you mad? I said that she was my wife. Then she is haunting you from beyond the grave because you did something terrible? No, it's not that. We had a good life in Britannia, and I gave her the most wonderful burial, you see. With the proper rites intoned by the greatest druids, and so forth. He keeps saying, and so forth, and so on. As if he doesn't pay attention to the detail. It's just like, oh yeah, and, and stuff, and whatever else was involved. You know, he's... Hmm. For someone who pay, is supposed to be paying close attention to his surroundings as an archer, that is concerning. Did they by any chance invoke the name of the lady? Aye, they did. Many times. Asking the ancients for safe passage through the other world. And now Lady A in its reincarnation as some kind of spirit doe makes total sense. And what does the lady have to do with your wife? She provided her a safe haven in Avalon, beyond the otherworldly sea. Does this have anything to do with the apparition we saw? You're a bright one, aren't you? <coughs> she eventually came to Avalon, just like us knights did, but in a different way. He's gone from are you mad to you're a bright one. This could be sarcasm. The chasm of the Tsar. As a spirit. How did you know? Yes, she became a spirit of the forest. A wise one, as she was in life. She still helped people. How did I know? Because you just told me. Let me guess. Then the storm changed everything. It turned everything to rot. This forest died and became a hellhole with Enid trapped inside. Trapped by whom? Or by what? 
This forest is haunted by evil. All the pain and suffering of nature embodied in a tortured spirit. So this spirit trapped Enid here? It feeds on her power. It must be agonizing. It makes my blood boil. And you need assistance to set her free. That's right. Are you willing to help a fellow knight? We always need warriors at the round table. You could help us out in return. By the blood of the gods, together again. It was like old times. How shall we do this? Matt Mercer, Arthurian edition. The forest is evil. It has a dark soul. We must lure it out into the open. And then we can destroy it. In all fairness, I used to have something very similar to how do you want to do this when I was running role-playing games back in the early 90s. I would invite players to describe. I just wouldn't necessarily have a stock phrase for it. But I can remember at any rate. How can a forest have a dark soul? Are you serious? It's as though you've just stumbled upon this island. With darkness covering the land, all things buried began to crawl to the light. That's just the beginning. Mark my words. Together we can win. It sounds like a simple fight. It isn't, trust me. There are two ancient shrines in this place, both of them haunted by this evil. We must visit each one and destroy the manifestation and its vassals. Let's do it then. So, as Sir Geraint informed us, there are two shrines. This is a... We've literally walked all this way already. And it was very quick. This is a very short, small map. Let's get on with it. Easy there. The Lord giveth. Now, overall, so far, the recruitment missions have been slightly harder than... I am going to drink a potion there. <coughs> than the regular missions. That is the recruitment missions that are unlocked by the um, by the alignment grid. This one doesn't seem so bad. It's a bit of a breath of fresh air and it would have been nice to do it ever so slightly earlier. And there's the stag once again. See that totem? Darkness draws power from it. Indeed. For so, country. for Lightning Arrow, it's not along a line, it's more of a burst in an area. So he is deemed closer than him. And that's going to him. Oh, really? We can get some very nice areas then. Hmm. So, if we could defeat this totem, that would be very handy. We're not likely to be able to reach it very soon, but we do have Lady Guinevere's teleportation. It would also be nice to have some kind of um, overwatch over here. We have Sir Geraint's arrows, we have Sir Ector with his fireball, no for the wicked. which could blatantly be dropped to include any two of these three. And throwing both the fireball and the lightning arrow may do significant damage. Your command? I'm not sure it would be enough for a kill, though. It might be nice to shield bash into that knight to knock him down to take away some of his action points. We don't want to be facing three of these at once. At your service, my lord. And we should almost absolutely use ice shield this turn. This may even be the kind of turn where we're going to want to use inspiration straight away. What? Hmm. 
I think I'm going to go for these ones. Right. Your command. Now. Five burning so he won't die immediately. For king and country. But if I do use inspiration, we can have Overwatch over here. And I think that would be a really good idea. Your orders. Ah, two green, two yellow. No Overwatch, Fen. No mercy for the wicked. Uh that's four green. Why not? Six. Kneel before your king. Why is it at least three? Okay, so it's the cost of our basic attack for Overwatch. It's not a set amount. Which one should I take? I am very much of the mind then. That trapping this entire row of squares will be highly to our advantage. And that indeed. These as well. None can stand in my way. And if I go to here. In terms of ranged attacks, there's one with a great big crossbow here, but apart from that, these are all pretty much close combat foes. I fight for honor. So if I go to just here. What? And then if I move him. I fight for honor. Here like this. Then I think we're good. Which one should I take? The unfortunate shout, not a lot we can do about it, but we can enjoy them blundering into our traps. And as you see, a total heal. I'm not sure if it is to heal them all the way up to full life, or if it's just that he happens to get enough. Oh man, this is good. Ish. Well, we're going to be using Cleave, aren't we? Boys and girls. Who do we want to drop the most? We do want to be... Uh, one more turn burning. It's not a lot we can do about what? him. Okay. We'll just fire that off in there. I can take for more. Excellent. Uh, dropping a revenant does seem like a really good idea. And I could shield bash into him as well, and I think I shall. Right. This is still a problem. We will fix that. We have two methods by which we could do that. And I think allowing Sir Bedivere in here to do some serious damage would also be wise. There we go. We even get an extra hit off. That's great. For my forefathers. If I do go in here, though, I need to get a kill. So... <laughs> kill has been acquired. And if we can get... We can empty a space for him... I fight by perhaps for shunting him a square... That would be magnificent. 
getting that kill would be good, but leaving him in the way to hold up this one would be even better. Now, we do want to stop you. For Camelot. I serve the Lord. Uh, let's slow you down. So now, he can't really do any damage to us at all, which is great. I think that probably ends our turn. Let's, um... What is your command? Change that facing in case he gets shot at. By like this one going around here. We didn't want to leave a blind sight. Um, for my in terms of facing, yes, we'll keep it fo focused that way. We do want to stop this one. But we've slowed him down enough. Oh, a jump attack. Nice. You know what else is really nice about that jump? It lets me just click on this and click on this. Wasn't that lovely? For king and country. How far? Really far. Okay, let's hold on to that idea. Your orders? One less to worry. I serve the Lord. Hmm. Time to feed the ravens. Now. Oh, we can potentially drop him this turn as well. We do want to think about this though. So. Should I take? I think, that, I think that actually works quite nicely for us. And then go to here. Free? Sure. In case he leaps. Blessings. Um No no, we'll just hold those back. Um This one can chase after her if she goes that way, so let's not do that just yet. But it can also come around here. But if I do go here, I can chase this and strike. I also absolutely want her facing back this way. And I think that's the end of our turn. That miss? Or did it do some effect I'm not aware of? I fight for honor. For Avalon. Great start. The Lord is my witness. Kneel before the uh, we can fine. We can work with that. Oh, hey. Those are nice options as well. Right. What is your command? Your command. Well, why don't we do some more of this? The Lord is my witness. So many offerings. I think we do want to restrict the damage that comes to this night. Excellent. I can take them all. Shield bash. Awesome. Taste my blade. Yeah, let's get in the middle there. Um. What? That's worked out quite nicely. Why don't we just pop you here, and I you can move up honor. a little as well. Now that is unfortunate, but we can work with it. Oh. 
Excellent. Your command. One more turn, so we can't do that just yet. Which means we might need to put these bodies down. Then again, we might not. Now you are dead. Stand against me, you die, scum. Lovely job. Let's tidy up. I'm not mad. Enid talks to me all the time. I can hear her voice in the whispering of the wind, the rustle of the trees. She gives me advice, as she did in life. That must be very reassuring. Looking at our health, I believe we can afford to rest for armor here. Remember, resting for armor is a luxury. Resting for health is more of a necessity. And that looked like another relic stave. So we can equip our magicians with better equipment. I suspect Merlin will stick with the one he's got, though, as it's got good synergy of his skills. So we don't need the hit point recovery particularly much. Let's get some of these armor points back, which we definitely have lost more than enough of. Everyone slept well. I feel refreshed. Almost like back in the day, I spent days in our cottage with Enid. While she was in the shape of a doe? Easy there. I don't like what you're implying. But rest assured, she could take on a human shape whenever she wished. I don't remember anything about her turning into an animal. In the story, I'd, I, at all. Maybe I'd have to go look back into that. Maybe it was like a really early version of Shrek. Now, here's an interesting thought. That's good to know. She's a spirit of the forest. She can do anything. Not for long if we can't set her free. Let's move on. And so on we go. Now, Sir Geraint is a marksman, and it it's would appear... I battled King Arthur and we both died, and still we both live. It would appear that the self-proclaimed experts on the forum have generally deemed the marksman to be a terrible class that no one should ever use. And that while they're occasionally useful in the second act, or rather, they're a good crutch in the second act, by the time you get into the third act, you should just ditch them all and you'll be using Arcanists more. Which is interesting, because the marksmen do have a, a good rate of fire, a, a low damage output, but the ability to strike many targets, whereas the, the Arcanists tend to be more focused with lots of um, high-cost single target abilities that use a lot of their action points and also area of effect attacks i don't know if i'm going to ditch many marksmen but i do have three on the roster already and while sir Evane and the lion is a great story he's not very well represented in this game and i don't think he'd be particularly useful for us we will he's definitely got a lot of fire synergy but we will struggle to get his morale up any higher. Sir Bors is a good friend of Sir Lancelot, and so a good thematic keep. Lady Dindrain has no basis at all in Arthurian mythology. She seems to be a complete creation of the game's creators. Uh, and so it would be good to let her go, However, it would also be good to keep a Christian character around for um, world events. And that, at the moment, is likely to be her or Sir Ector. And um, she's in a much better mood than he is when it comes to morale. So I don't know which of them I'm likely to let go. But I'm probably going to let at least one go. And with Sir Geraint probably being much more suited to our um, alignment. We might have to let two of them go. We'll see. Ooh. Okay. We get a deployment battle here. 
fun. And there she is waiting for us. She could be warning us of those, or she could be drawn to them. Now, we have a revenant, we absolutely want to shut that down. Most of the enemies are over this way. They got a good amount of crossbowmen. A knight who's going to cause problems, and some revenants. These squires aren't a big threat to us. And we do want to be enjoying our archery. So. Serve the Lord. That's good. I don't see a turn one fireball. I fight for honor. I mean, maybe even out here. I can take them all. Your orders. Now, Lady Guinevere does have the. Does she have the ability that boosts everyone else's army? I think she does. Yes, she does. So actually posting her adjacent to a number of other heroes would be good. Power and glory. That's actually a really good shooting spot. I fight for honor. The Lord is we pop best. him here. We can still do heavy damage. Uh, I can't remember the lightning bolt damage. I think it's like eight or nine. So we may need to move forwards to get this one, but I think we might be able to take him out in one turn. If we or pop him out here and like hide and drop some traps, that could also be very good for us. Which means we can draw her back to for here country. and have everyone relatively safe. Let's do it. Excellent. What? There we go. Lovely. This shambling walking dead figure we can pretty much ignore. These crossbowmen are going to be slightly more important. Slightly. Now you are dead. And if we pull you back to here. So. Just shock them all down. Push her to here. There's that's the nearest crossbow. Or my forefathers. What are we waiting for? Push you up as well, and I think we're relatively good. Okay, that's a problem. We'll need to look into that right now. Right, let's ignore him for a moment. So many offerings. At your service, my lord. Charge. That's a good start. Pull her back to here. Power and glory. Excellent. Your command. You know what? Great stuff. Um, 
no second shot. None can stand in my way. What is your command? Right. Ugh. Wasted. If we go round here behind the pillar, however. Wait, stop. Not wasted. Now we go round behind the pillar. Look, it might help. And we can get you to here. For king and country. You're not Less moving. Sense. We can pop you here with your magic shield. Your command. And you can go there. You know what? Throw that up as well, because you can. Oh! <clears throat> okay, poison's a bit of an issue. A healing potion will remove the condition. But is it worth removing? That phone needs to be dropped. It's low damage. So many um, offerings. This is lovely. Mm. And this feels almost pretty. Fire and steel. Excellent. And she can teleport as well. I fight for honor. Not quite enough. Okay, no, so she can literally teleport over and freeze him. Although her armor might have been a better, you know, better reason to keep her over there. Currently, so far, so good. No mercy for the wicked. Um, can I just like drop? Now this is friend or foe. And I should look at this. Wonder to start the turn. How long? For my Camelot. One, two turns. Right. Good to know. I fight for honor. Well, let's get rid of that. The starters. On working on that. Um. Hello. That's not very much, is it? Okay. That is. Hmm. I think I'm just better off outright attacking twice. For the wicked, slow hex, fire blast. Not quite enough, but we get to move. Shit, I thought I was moving him sideways. Bollocks. Oh, well. Let's just put a blood curse on him. He can't bleed, but he will have reduced damage. At your service, my lord. Um. Four. Got it. Okay. Wait. He's got magic shields. I should just. That was a misclick, an annoying one. But hey. Could go knock him down. You know what? It still keeps me here so sure. Puts him at slightly greater risk, though. So I'm not happy about that. Uh huh. Big heal. Unfortunate. Ah, 
Okay, that's a bit far. That's great. Your orders? Hmm. Which one should I take? At your service, my lord. So we're going to chase this one down. Threaten him, keep him busy. She can't do much from over here. She can't teleport just yet. Um, where'd it go? It's over here, right? Somewhere? Destroyed? Does it have a limited amount of uses? Well, that's None interesting, whatever the situation is. Way. Right. Let's absolutely get this one to the point where he will hopefully burn out, or worse, or just get shot. Hmm. Okay, not a lot we can do about this, so we just take the low damage shot, wish we could slow him, and flee. How are we looking for... Ah, that's a problem. Right. For honor. Your orders? Go stand there. Not good idea. Go stand here. Slightly, ever so slightly better idea. That's not saying much. Oh, didn't rise up his backstabs, okay. Uh-huh. Let's get that health back. Let me cut you to size. I fight for honor. Ah, three turns? Well, I suppose that's all we're getting back then. Your orders? For honor! Accept these offerings. That's it. Whatever was haunting this forest, we banished it. We should return to the cottage and set Enid free. Now, we're rather low on armor. And we do have potions. Which restore hit points. We don't have potions which restore armor. This looks like an armor pit stop right here. And what would this be? Your proficiency in spellcraft reveals that the shrine would unleash the following power. Heal vitality. Vitality, not hit points. This seems like a very fitting choice. Excellent. That's more than getting back four points of mission. Finally, something to plunder. I think when I played this one previously, the shrine gave me something else, because the shrines are randomized after all. I can't remember what it was, but it wasn't that. I think it might have just been heal armor, which would have been was would have been really good. For someone like Sir Mordred right about now, considering I slept like a log. that the mission is not yet over, so there must be more to do. At this point, we have explored the entirety of this small map, but clearly we are not yet done, so let's continue. And we should consider the possibility that the Lady Enid is possibly the source of this wickedness, rather than a warning against it. Because she's been literally leading us into danger. Something is not right. We destroyed that evil presence. But what are these wretches doing here then? Okay, we're walking dead. 
same and same here. A knight and uh, walking dead up there. I don't see enemies coming in to respawn yet, but that doesn't mean it will not happen. Okay, he can't shoot through this bit of rock, apparently. Power and glory. This is obviously begging for a fireball right here, so let's do that. But let's slow him first. For King and if we country. use the lightning should weaken them both to the point where that one will survive unfortunately so we'll want to he's got his bubble which will prevent protect him from one attack then we should be able to shoot now which one should i take range you're in range excellent and i'll just uh overwatch Might as well just do that as well. Sure. I mean, you can just... I want to say stroll over and kill that one, but... Probably go this one instead. Just to keep the shield alive. For honor. Okay, let's do it. He got up. He got hit. Prepare to die. All right, let's do some killing and recover as much as, as we can by web hit points. Excellent. So many offerings. Shall bleed. Oh, I was just thinking, how are we going to attack someone that far away? Well, line of sight may be an issue. Problem solved. For the round table. It's a trap! So, once again, I see Fireball Central. The Tortured Aunt. So, the Banshee will have, um, you know, horrible stuff that will close us down. Steal our action points. We'll want to get very brutal very quickly, very early on. I serve the Lord. Okay. Let's hit her with a slow hex, which she may have resisted. We were doing it for the damage. If she no, no she doesn't seem to have resisted it. Time to feed the ravens. And stigma. Sinners shall bleed. And then we'll drop the fireball. Also, we note that the Head Ranger is the same as the one from the previous encounter down here. These two knights may be a problem, but we can also drop some traps if we want to. I fight for honor. This seems like a really good idea. If there was a way that I could just move one square sideways and chuck it out over here, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Iron Steel. Could teleport over an attacker. These two knights would be deadly to us if we did. And given the amount of vitality we'd return to the queen, we shouldn't strip it away just so early on. No mercy for the wicked. 
So he's practically done for this turn, but we do need to protect her ladyship, so let's do that at least. So many offerings. Could hide. Do that. Now we can move up here and freeze one of these. And I think I shall. Bam! And he's knocked down. Uh, I will... Mm, yeah, I will take the extra square. Because why not? And I think that's our turns done. We literally only had one action point left among the entire party. Have we denied her her scream? Possibly. Nope, we have not. Okay. Things now get pretty serious. For my forefathers. He's got his back turned. This is one of the greatest opportunities we could have expected. Oh, he is so dead. With the fire, he's dead. At your service, this is a much more serious issue. So your command? can just keep shooting her, and that's probably not an entirely bad idea. Ready. What else? We're just not getting a line to him wherever we go. So. That's not an entirely bad idea. At your service, my lord. We want a line to him, we have to go to at least here. I can do that. So what we'd like to do is get him in there. We can't do that. We can do this. Um, or drop the thunder. That's actually a good idea. Because we're wanting to reduce the, de the threat For to her. Honor. He's on fire. It doesn't matter that we don't have the action points to finish him off. Actually, we could go like here, couldn't we? Let's hold on to... Whoa. Like, back out here. Excellent. Sinner shall bleed. No, None not. can stand in my way. There we go. And two should fall. Now the health of the Banshee is what's going to keep this encounter going. And give us the risk of that enemy rising once again. What is your command? Extremely minimal damage. So many offerings. Hmm. Could absolutely go finish him off while I can. Um, I can take them all. <laughs> getting the hits in while we can is not a bad idea. King and country. 
and reduced armor means the arrows will now strike with more force. Your orders? Fire and steel. Excellent. So if we go to there. At your service, my lord. Teleport's got another turn on it. So we just come up here instead, and I believe that's our turn. That's unfortunate, but it does go to hit points first and doesn't go straight to vitality. Excellent. For king and country. Which one should I take? <laughs> I hope you'll find peace, my love. Accept my eternal gratitude, friends. We have saved Enid from this torment. What will happen to Enid, and what are you going to do now? Um, this... we can probably address this soon anyway. What will happen to Enid? I pray to the lady and the old gods to keep her safe. She must be here, somewhere. And when Avalon has been cleansed, she can return to her glades. And what are you going to do now? That's a great question. First, I'll say a proper farewell to Enid with a flagon of good wine and a heartfelt prayer to the old gods. He seems like a fairly decent soul. Also, that helm has a more sort of, um... Dark Ages look to it, more sort of Viking or Norman. Camelot, it could use such knights as you, Sir Geraint. Aye, I could join your round table. There are plenty of places tainted by darkness. You know where to find us. And there we have it, a fairly simple and straightforward mission. Let's go back to court and see how things stand. got a couple of levels, that's always great. And plenty of nice finds here. Including building resources which we desperately need. So, Frostbitten Rune of Shattering. Plus three damage against chilled units, plus three damage against frozen units. Good for a sage. So Lady Guinevere or Lady is old. Swift Sigil of Sickness. Marksman and Arcanist only. So the light, lightest of the light. Plus two turns, poison duration. Um, okay, marksmen have poison, arcanists don't particularly. Gain plus three movement action points for the first turn of each encounter. That's not a particularly good item, I can probably just sell that. Picked Slayer Ring without maneuvering. Plus three damage against slowed units, so taking Sir Ector would be good. We don't have many other sources of slowness yet, apart from traps. Plus two damage against the Picts. Um, it might be good for Sir Bedivere. It feels to team up with Sir Ector frequently in the future. Shieldbreaker provision of Pict Slay. So, vanguards. So the sneaky assassin thief types. Ignore 50% of attacked units' block values. Always good. Uh, blocks are frontal and they heavily reduce damage. Plus two damage against Picts. So again, good for one of the upcoming missions. Scroll of Taunt. Every enemy unit within four tiles range will attack the hero. Useful. Remember that Sir Mordred has a rune that makes his attacks taunt at the moment anyway. But worth holding on to. Scroll of Recuperate. Gain 10 temporary hit points for free turns. So it's not recovering hit points. That's interesting because recuperation is like recovering, resting, replenishing. Skin Gouger Room. Plus 3 damage against unarmored units. Um, the Picts are less likely to have armor than the Lost are, unless we're talking the zombies. But I'm not sure how useful this is going to be. Arcanist only. Oh, that's... yeah, we can probably ditch that. 
Brewmaster's Sigil. Medium armor, so Vanguard, Sage, and Sir Bors, who can wear medium armor, regain free vitality when drinking potions. That's actually pretty good. There are a number of people who could benefit from that. You know, just saying. Um, Eagle-eyed amulet, plus one perception. Great. You know what? 11 physical resistance, not too shabby. Amulet of vigor, plus seven vitality. A bit basic, but I'm sure it could be very useful. Lady Azold returned, returned to the court with good news. My champion managed to commune with the ancient dragons through the, bo through the bone altar, and finally, after many hours of flattery and empathic silence, the spirits of the dragons returned to their dreamless slumber. The druids were pleased, almost grateful, a welcome change from their usual demanding and judging attitude. Acknowledged the report with a proud smile. Plus 40% experience for Lady Azold. I think it's not like 40% in the next mission. I think it's just like 40% of a level. Increases Lady Azold's loyalty by two. That's great. Adds 300 building resources. Even better. And Sir Geraint has joined the court. We should probably make room for him. Only level eight. He really needs to be in missions soon. Also, two available skill points to spend. We'll have fun with that. So he was level 7, and he leveled up to 8. So that level 10 mission was really a level 7 mission or something, and the enemies just got upped a bit? Possibly. I don't know how we were supposed to get the alignment requirements earlier on. I mean, we only missed about one point, so maybe we could have got it a little bit earlier. And he looks like he's got some funky stuff. Again, the poison stuff that most of the archers seem to have. This is fairly unique looking and where's it and he's got this as well which is nice um, I think we should probably let Sir Evain go I mean it would be nice to deal with that first new challenge reward available knockdown master grants immunity to knockdown to the selected hero Putting this on a solid defender would actually be a really good thing. No, 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 not you. Go. Dragon Breath. Essence of Confl Conflagration. Grants 20% additional burning damage to the selected hero. We have two Arcanists who use burning damage spells. We also have one archer who uses a lot of burning abilities. So Bors leveled up from training. Um, I think actually grabbing some of these might just be really useful. Or some of the upgrades to unyielding. Um, even if it's just like physical debuff resist, okay. Then it'd be on 15-15. And Ruthless. Regain three hit points from each skill. Okay, that's actually... Hit points from each hit, hit points from each kill. He could be pretty solid and almost frontlining. If we could keep the enemies just a square or two away with, like, shield bash attacks and knockbacks of some sort. Interesting. Sir Lanville has healed from an injury. And Sir Lanville, I feel, has served his time. We would be down to one champion only. But... He's not got anything too special. And he's not a very major character. Go with goodness, Sir Knight. Go off into the world. Adventure. Be good. Help people. Ah, mouse. But mouse map, run out of space. Didn't want to go all the way down over there. There we go. And that should have opened up a position here. So, Artificer is very nice. Um, 100 Relic Dust after each mission. Um, however,. If we do this, he's sitting out missions until he just gets replaced, and he's just here, won't be taken out. 
because he would lose so much, um, he would lose five loyalty. And that would take him down into the, we really don't want to take him anywhere, kind of region. Uh, potent Hex. The extra spellcraft from Potent Hex is very nice. Um, so let's just grab it. Sure. I want to think a bit, because I might just want to get the poisoned arrow for future use. Also, um, we've opened up space. One of these may very well be going on the next mission. 54 of 55, he doesn't need to be here. And we're probably taking him as well, to be honest. So actually, let's take both of these out of healing for now. New items after the next mission, not currently. Um, this is unaffordable. But in terms of upgrades... Wait a minute, wait a minute. There was something. 1500 each, so we need more. Okay. We really do need to be increasing this. And having someone... Ah. Merlin is still healing from his wound. And it will take a while. Oh, was it this? Okay, we can grab this and get an extra slot in the cathedral to heal from injuries. However... That's just 500 more each. And that's probably one or two missions. Hmm, tricky. Here we have fun choices. I kind of want to either grab Frost Armor or max out Aura of Protection. But all resistance is really good. And doesn't one of these give her resistances to nearby people? Or is it this one? So that's armor. I think I want to check world events. Okay, the same event is back. Lady Azold, who always had a strong bond with the old ways, approached me with a strange warning. The spirits of the ancestors whispered about an ancient enemy returning to Avalon. I should open my mind and seek the wisdom of the lady, whatever that means. Usually I'm not a superstitious type, but Avalon opened my eyes to the true power of magic. I could ignore the warning. Decrease Lady Zizold's loyalty. Visit the shrine of the lady and meditate for a night. Gives some ordered experience and an injury. Meditate for three days and three nights. Gives him double the experience, a heavy injury, and increases her loyalty by one. Now, given that we have a mission that he has to absolutely sit out and ignore anyway, this is good. It does force us to go on that mission, because otherwise Sir Balaam would be our only frontliner on the other mission against the Lost. So we would be going on a mission with a level 8 hero on a level 10 mission. Level 8 and level 11 um, of Sir Balan as well. So then as a fourth, would we want a wizard or an archer? Or someone who could frontline a bit more? Maybe even Sir Bors, I don't know, but I think, so I can click this option and receive broken limb, movement cost double action points. That's really expensive for him. We can put him in the cathedral and go fast healing. So we have the Horn of the Dauntless, which is against Sir uh, Tewellin, who we've already slain, the lost hero. 
the Fisher King, which needs to be addressed at some point, and the Cauldron, and nothing else. Mordred is required for the Fisher King. Mordred is forbidden from the Cauldron, and I think Lady Guinevere is required. Lady Guinevere received an urgent message from- Now. It's against the Picts, so Sir Tristan would be useful. Do I want to take two sages on the same mission? That is really iffy. And they do belong together. Oh, that's tricky. If I go on this one, I sense I'm going to have a really hard time if I don't take Sir Mordred, because the Lost can heap up and do lots of damage. As can the Picts, actually. And it might be nice to... I... It's a shame we can't partial heal injuries, then come back for them later on. Hmm. So Bors might be... Now, I was thinking, uh, like... Guinevere, Isolde, Dindrain, and Sir Tristan for that mission. Huh. Uh, late... Well, well, well. Sir Evain is the burning one, right? So he would be best against the Lost. But... Mm. Now, he's pretty healthy. Um, it might be time to ditch this armor and go for the Armor 51 armor and just tank up solidly for the battle ahead. That's something I can think of in between episodes. But I do have some levels here to enjoy as well. Um... Extra damage against burning. He doesn't do the burning. Other people do the burning. So we have um, Sir Yvain, Sir Ector, and Sir Merlin would provide the fire for now. He does have dash as well. Maybe we could upgrade that. Um, extra physical resistance would be good. First shot uh, is nice. Deflection would be a really good solid choice. And Adrenaline probably worth looking at in the future. And I don't use Overwatch enough of my archers for this to be really good. This Alchemist isn't worth getting unless I get the Poisoned Arrow. Going against the Celts, the Poisoned Arrow might be a really good choice. I think I kind of want to hold off and think about him there for this. Um... Reduce the cooldown. Reduce the duration. Reducing, increasing the duration? Really good. Sorry, not reducing. Increasing. Uh, action point. Make it cheaper. And one additional plate to four. That's great as well. Um, causes shock would be very good. I think shock reduces their action points. Uh, increases. Okay, so it's a larger lightning burst. Got it. Increased damage against everyone. Um, poison, again, if we'd have to go for poison. Um, could grab dash. It could come in very helpful. Uh, relaxed. When resting, gains an additional 20%. Hey, we've got someone else who's got that, haven't we? Yes. And lightheaded. Minus 20. Is it him? No, it's not him who has it. Okay. Hmm. That's an issue. Right. Uh, increased potion effects. Not bad. Um, I'm not sure. If we are... Oh, going up against the Lost next mission. Uh, sorry, not the Lost. Uh, one point. Okay, so that's an upgrade then. Uh... The hero loses two action point for each trap. Oh, we can deactivate traps. Right, yes. Um, this is an odd one. Bear traps action point cost is reduced by one. Decreases the maximum number of active traps by two. Which means we would go down from four, five active traps to three. That, down, going down to three traps feels very, very strange. I could put poison, poison on the throwing dagger, uh, balance throw, extra range, um, target an additional unit, second unit, sub 50%, okay, okay. 
Uh, finishing blow. Sure. Vanguard can get finishing blow quite early. Uh, extra damage gets bleeding units again. He doesn't inflict bleeding. Poison, we can throw in some poison there. It's not going to be a patch on his poison stacking um, stuff. And I want to... Oh. Right. Cost no action points on the first support spell. Um, 15 mental and physical debuff resist is great, but isn't there an ability here which adds it to adjacent allies? Um, also grants 10 physical debuff resist, 10 mental debuff resist. Okay, it's pretty much this then, I think. Um, all out in two tiles, so... Reduce all incoming vitality damage by 25%. That would be really good for her. Um, that's just really good as well, though. Kind of want to do it. But then the, the resistances reduce duration of things and effects. So they're not necessarily like a... They're not a dice roll that... So it's like every 10 resistance reduces it by 10% or whatever. Um, that's a temporary. Um, a straight up damage boost. Unburdened. When the hero's hit points drops to zero, all cooldowns, all cooldowns are reduced by two turns. So that's pretty much you get to do everything straight away. She has no teleport and she does have the Ice Lance instead. Mm, very, very tasty. I think I've got to. No teleport, so she can't get out of trouble, so she needs to be tough. Uh, most of the others have this already. Oh, he's got all three. Wow. But yeah, pretty much every archer has deflection. The, other t the others don't really have adrenaline already yet. So why don't I get one of these? Adrenaline, probably a good choice actually, especially with the Dawnbreaker Idol, which I could absolutely give to someone else. There we go. So no big poison synergies for him just yet. Also, two skill points. Um, I want to just grab Flurry, I think, straight away. There's lots of nice upgrades, and I should probably get Vigilance at some point. But I'm thinking Flurry. Flurry's four attacks as opposed to uh, four action points for two targets, four action points for three. But um, this we can put them anywhere we want. That's like three squares. Um, three, six, so two attacks here could be better. Let's grab it anyway so that I have it. And I could send him out with that injury. Movement cost, though, I think, is pretty big. Um, might be worth working on his sprint as he doesn't have the jump. Gas trap could be worth investing in. Extra point of perception, always good. Oh, he's only got one point anyway, so it's an upgrade. Right. Now uh, we've got poison, extra damage against bleeders. Um,. Ignores attacks of opportunity when sprinting. Would have come in really helpful in the crypt. Definitely worth investing in. Because I'm going to keep thinking he has it anyway. So then we've just got you. We can grab the poisoned arrow. For future usage. Um, everyone one apart from Yvain. No, no, you don't have it either. Okay. And he has been spending lots of time out in the woods, so he could have researched herb lore and how to poison things if he needed to. And then we can go into alchemist as well. Um, better armor. I mean, that mental debuff resist is pretty nice, actually. 
Actually, that makes total sense with the slagging off that woman gave him and how he just put up with it so much. Um. Ooh. If we get Poisoned Arrow, we can then get Weak Spots upgrade later on. And Alchemist. It may be worth getting Dash for him. And it's always good having more active skills. Upgrades are great, but having more active skills for when skills are on cooldown is always good. Alright, well... I'm pretty much at this point dedicating to going on this mission to try and rescue Sir Parsifal. Lady Guinevere received an urgent message from Sir Percival, the Grail Knight who has been wandering in the wilderness for a while. He claims to have found a way to use the power of the Grail again. So, required Lady Guinevere, no Sir Mordred. Let's go against the... Hmm. Having Sir Tristan would be very helpful, especially if we can have something nice to replace this with. Um, he doesn't... He does have the Traps Mastery, so... Um, hmm. We do want to increase this skill a lot. Uh, he would need to be hiding a lot and not taking to the front lines very much. Um, let's also get a couple of potions. Um, hmm. This is a good skill. Can we reduce the... Can increase the range? Reduce the cooldown? Increase the damage. So this is a good skill. We want to be increasing this skill a lot. It's going to be a favourite skill. I don't know if we'll bother with a throwing dagger, but poison gas, because we can make it poison gas, which he can then ignore and just walk through anyway, because he's, you know, one of the lost is all very nice. Now, we are... Oh, let's get two more potions then. Right, one, two. Um, it's probably worth getting that last one anyway, and we'll consider those. If he is going to be our only tanky warrior, then having the extra armor points and the extra hit points will really matter more than the two points reflection. So, we're going to have him, her, him. Uh, then for a fourth person, we can't take Merlin. We can take Sir Ector if we wish. That may not be wise. I'm not sure if having an archer or Sir Ector with all his curses would be better against the Picts. We could take Sir Bedivere. I don't think Jewel Vanguard is the best way to go here. And I don't think taking two level eight heroes, we've got an eight and a nine on the mission already. Maybe taking Lady Azold for a level 11 is worth it. I don't rightly know. And it would also be nice not having her out-level everyone else at the moment, because we do want her levelling up a bit. Huh. Four Vital at the end of a mission doesn't really need that, so we can replace it with something like this now. Um, Unbreakable Armour Outnumbered. Okay, five damage until the end of the encounter for each hit received, plus five percent. So that, that would be good as well. I'm not sure. I need some time to think about it. So I think it's time I end this episode. I hope you all enjoyed this one, and I will look forward to seeing you all in the very next one. Uh, which will happen soon, but there's other things I want to record, like sorcery, that definitely need to be finished. So I'm going to say goodbye for now, and see you all soon. Cheerio, everyone.